Technology and Education. Today, I'm Richard Smith. And I'm Caroline Crawford, and we are coming to you from the University of Houston Clear Lake in Houston, Texas, USA. And today, we're discussing learning theory. Well, most people talk about learning theories, and they go straight into all the different theories, and nobody ever actually speaks about what is learning, what is learning theory. Why do we have them? What is a theory? A theory is merely an educated guess. After looking at the situation and guesstimating what's actually occurring, there's a theory. Yeah? Would you agree with that? I, I agree with it, yes. And then we follow up with research to see whether or not research supports a theory. Yeah? Okay. So... My goodness, you're going along with me so well. So what is a I'm, learning theory? Uh, no, I'm going to trap you. <laughs> <laughs> so a learning theory is merely an educated guess about the way people learn, and there are many different learning theories because there are many different perceptions about the ways people learn. And which learning theory is correct and which one will get our students to learn? Now, see, so you and I disagree on that statement because I don't think there's a correct learning theory. There are many different styles and tools to pull depending upon the subject matter, the environment in which you are learning, the learners, whom they may be and going through that whole analysis stage of what is most appropriate for the subject matter and the learners and the situation in which you find yourself. Well, great, but which learning theories work? Well, they all work. It depends. Well, if they all work... Brilliant. Depends. <laughs> That's a great answer. If they all work, what's the difference which one we use? Well, as, for example, um, you are very much a behaviorist in the way you design instruction. Would I, would that be a true statement? That would be a true statement for the, for the online course that, that I developed. They're definitely very behaviorist oriented. Oh, now see, that's interesting. Would you call, would you frame your face-to-face -face instruction in the same manner? Would it also be behaviorist? Face-to-face -face instruction uh, is, is different because I can interact more with the, uh, with the students and I can uh, lead them to uh, various points in the, in the topic that we are uh, studying and also I can take from what they comment and have students gain perceptions from what other students have uh, contributed during the uh, class. So it's not anywhere near as behavioristic as an online course that I develop because I know that there is a cert there's certain content I want my students to know. I know that there are certain techniques to get them to understand the content and that I utilize it. And also there's a limited amount of time and discussion by the nature of the online course, at least right now, is uh, limited. Now, see, that's what I find so interesting about learning theories, is people's perceptions not only about themselves and the way they learn as a learner, but also the way their instructional style, the way that they instruct what type of learning environment they create, what learning theories they pull from, as well as, as an instructional designer, what is your perception of a learning environment. How do you create instruction as an instructional designer? What are your perceptions of not only the subject matter but the learners at hand as well as the instructional style that one expects to be implemented, for example, in an online course? Or we could be talking about a face-to-face -face course or mm -hmm. a great little just-in-time learning module. It all depends upon all of these different components, but one person rarely has a distinct learning style to cover all these different modes of instruction. And are you talking about the students now with learning styles? I'm talking about everybody. As yourself, as a course instructor, you believe that people learn in a certain way. You may be pulling from two or three different learning theories to develop that belief. I, I, I pull from teaching theories. Okay, I don't, teaching I, theories. I don't learn my students, I teach my students. Well, that depends on how well you speak. <laughs> Yes, yes, I know. That's a little annoyance for you, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> it's not a learning theory, it's a teaching theory. It's a teaching theory, just like I have, I have instructional goals. I don't have stu student goals for, uh, for learning. I don't have student learning goals because the goals learn nothing. However, the goals might possibly teach something. <laughs> okay, yes. But let's talk about the specific learning theories. We have, there's a whole gamut to choose from, anything from behaviorists, to cognitivist, there is constructivist, and connectivism is one of the more intriguing um, recent okay, so you have learning all these... theories that is under discussion. Is it a learning theory? Is it not a learning theory? I don't know. Well, hold on a second. Now you have what do you, what do you say? There's const constructivist, 
behaviorist, cognitivist, constructivist. There, there's a whole gamut okay, so to let's, choose from. Let's say, let me give you a scenario. Well, those aren't the only ones, but yes, okay. Oh, okay so let's say there are more. Here I am, a high school teacher of, let's say, uh, social studies, and I want to produce, I have to produce a course over a year's time. How do I know which learning theory I should base my course on? Are you talking about a face-to-face -face course? Are a face-to-face -face course. Online I'm, I'm course? A, I'm Who a, are you as I'm, an instructor? I'm, one should be. I'm one teaching. should understand their philosophical framework of understanding. You know the whole. What is your belief about the way you yourself learn? What is your belief about the way other people learn? What is your belief about the way you teach? Well, I tell you what. I have a belief. These that are I, all components that pull together into one's system of belief concerning learning theories and. You know, like a little toolbox. I what tool are you pulling that. at what time? I under, I What's most appropriate? I under, I understand really? That. I understand My rambling that. makes sense. I, I love that. I, un I understand that, but let's go back to me as a high school it's teacher. It's all about you. I have 30 <laughs> students per class. I'm teaching six student, six classes a day. That's 180 students. Uh, I know how to get the. I know how to get the content over. I know certain. I know that I have to do. Um, I know there are questions I can ask that will elicit resp responses from students. I know that over a period of one week I need to cover a certain amount of the curriculum. How do I know which learning theory to pick? To, well, there to are bring many questions beyond what you've stated. Whom are you as an instructor? How long have you been instructing? How comfortable are you as an instructor? Who are your learners? Yo, that's how an awful do you lot. reach that's, them most appropriately? How, that's an awful lot and to ask. And what's the subject matter? That's an awful lot to ask a single teacher to consider. A novice teacher, absolutely. Especially a novice teacher or an experienced teacher. That is a lot. Why don't we just have a learning theory that works and say this is the basis of how you're going to construct your lessons and go at it? Because that is way too simplified of a statement. Every subject matter lends itself to different learning theories, learning styles. Well, then, oh, learning theories, not styles. Let's not go there. Well, <laughs> styles of have, learning theory. You have learning to match more appropriately. Right. So, okay. Well, there are only there's a limited number of subjects that we teach in a high school or a middle school or an elementary school, for that matter. Not necessarily. So we, we could pick the we could pick the um, the um, learning theory that best matches social studies, a learning theory that best matches mathematics and so on and so forth and show the teachers how to construct their lessons on, on, on based on these theories and let them construct their lesson plans based on those theories. That would seem simple enough. Well, for example, if I developed a course and gave it to you to instruct, you and I have significantly different belief systems about how learning occurs. Would you agree to that? Yes, I would agree to that. <laughs> I'm just giving you a free one right there. <laughs> so, my course, if I developed, let's say an online course. No, let's say a face-to-face -face course. Okay, if I developed a face-to-face -face -face course and delineated everything out for you, I have a certain style of instruction. I'm very cognitive in the way that I focus upon the learners. Yes, it starts out very behavioral, here's your knowledge and all that stuff. But then we start thinking about the higher order thinking skills and the cognitive component. How do you think about this material? How does it work within the larger realm? All the way towards constructivists. I'm, I'm told, I can't believe this, but I'm told that I'm very constructivist, cognitive constructivist in my instructional style. I want to be taught. I want to learn in a behaviorist manner. Tell me the information. Tell me exactly what I need to know. How does it all frame out? And then I'll work it out in my head on my own. How does it fit into the larger situation, the larger um, my understanding of the world, which doesn't always occur within a learning environment. I, I can't stand being in a constructivist environment, which, which is why I was so offended when someone said, oh, well, you're like you teach in a constructivist either. way. No, I don't. I hate that. I hate that. Tell me what I have to know. Tell me the knowledge base, and then let's play with it. Don't just warm, fuzzy, let me figure out what I'm supposed to know. No. That's not what I'm paying you for. So I was so offended when someone said I was constructivist in the classroom environment. Couldn't believe it. Well, you're a nice constructivist, but not. Ah. <laughs> well, that's here's why I pull in Jonathan's work about how even though you're thing. constructivist, you still have to start with the knowledge base. This whole warm fuzzy, 
you'll the student will the learner will figure here it is, out. No, is, you don't figure it out. Here, Why are you here as the here instructor? Here is the thing. Here is the thing. When we ask the, the teachers to create lessons based on particular learning theories or choose among several learning theories and see which one works. This is not an easy thing to do for the average teacher, and Absolutely. most teachers are average teachers. It's not easy and what for the, anyone. And it's not easy for any, anyone, and you're, you're correct. And that, I think, is one of the basic problems of applying uh, learning theory. And one more item. We I, have, I'm not sure about that, have, but if you don't know what you're talking about, how can you frame your understanding of the subject matter, of learning? If you don't actually look at each of the different learning theories, and develop an understanding of the theory and the research look, involved in it, the models. Around, and if all. you look around, you'll see that there are a lot of people who do not know what they're talking about that are in very big positions of responsibility and have other people listen to them. That but is a truly frightening statement. It is, and that's where we have to leave it because we have reached the end of another Technology and Education Today. I'm Caroline Crawford, coming to you from the University of Houston, Clear Lake in Houston, Texas, USA. I'm Richard Smith.